IK to FK and FK to IK automatic snapping mechanism has been one of the most requested tutorial. Let's see how we can solve this problem right now. IK to FK chain snapping has been one of the most requested tutorials those last months. Unfortunately, I don't know how to script. So I find a little tip that once you're familiar with will save you a lot of time than trying to match the pose by hand. I also invite you to stay until the end of the video where I'll show you some tips that will be very useful using this mechanism whenever you are dealing with motion capture or animation library. Let's get started. Whether it's a leg chain or an arm chain, you will need a FK to IK mechanism. So if you don't know how to build this, I've covered this in detail in this previous video. What we have here is a simple character rig with an arm set to FK and a property bone that allow us to switch to the IK chain. When I build an inverse kinematic chain, I generally have my end controller here, so the end is parented to this controller, and then I simply set the inverse kinematic and set this as a pole target. So now the end is following and I have my inverse kinematic set. What we want to do is to duplicate this chain and then we will constrain it using the mechanism of the inverse kinematic using copy transform. So I will select first the mechanism bone of the inverse kinematic, then this one and press Ctrl Shift to see copy transform. And I will do the same here. Now this newly created chain will perfectly follow the inverse kinematic chain. So I will repeat exactly the same process with my mannequin ring. I will select the IK chain, duplicate it, and then I will add a copy transform from the original chain onto this newly created chain. This is going to be my IK to FK mechanism chain. This chain will allow us to copy the transform channel onto our FK controller later on. Now that the copy transform constraint has been set onto this chain, let's go to the FK to IK snapping chain. To create the second mechanism, I will go into edit mode and I will just duplicate the pull target and the end IK controller. Note that in my case, I've aligned the IK controller with the world space. This will help the animator a lot. This is a concept I've explained into my rigging course, the art of effective rigging in Blender. Once duplicated, I will scale them down and unparent them using the Alt P shortcut. Those new bones are going to be our FK to IK snapping mechanism. Now they are properly named, I will display my forward kinematic controllers and I will parent the end IK to the end forward kinematic controller and the pole IK to the arm FK controller. For clarity's sake, I will modify the custom shape of those two newly created bones with a simple empty. I've also added them to a bone group with a yellow color. Now when I move the FK end controller, the IK snapper follow, and whenever I move the arm controller, the arm pole follow. I will now first try to match an IK position of the arm to an FK. So I will set my arm to be handled in inverse kinematic. I will give it a position and set a couple of keyframes on frame number 10. Now, when I switch back to forward kinematic using my slider, we will see the arm snapping back into its rest pose. But if I display this forward kinematic chain and hide my inverse kinematic chain, and then I set a copy transform from the IK to FK snap chain onto our forward kinematic chain, the forward kinematic chain will match this position. The yellow chain copy the transformation of the inverse kinematic and the forward kinematic copy the transform of this yellow chain. So I can't move 
my forward kinematic anymore. But what I can do now is set my animation start and end on the frame I want to switch, press F3 and select bake action. I will then click only selected bone, overwrite current animation, visual cane and clear constraint. This will get rid of the copy transform constraint, but it will also write a keyframe for each of the selected bone of the forward kinematic chain with their location, scale and rotation written. If an if I now switch back and forth between inverse kinematic and forward kinematic, we can see that the arm is not moving anymore and I have full control on both chains. I've matched the position of the inverse kinematic. Now I will pose my character using forward kinematic and I will try to match the pose with the inverse kinematic chain. So I've set my character into a quick pose using forward kinematic and then I will add a copy transform from our snapper onto the end IK, the controller, and then a copy location from the pole snapper onto the pole target. From there, as I did before, I will set my animation length to only frame 10. We can see as before that now when I move the FK, the inverse kinematic chain is following because it's constrained with a copy transform. So I just have now to bake the action of the end IK and the pole target. This time when I will switch from IK to FK to check if my snapping is OK, we will see a very slight movement of the elbow. This subtle movement is probab this subtle movement is probably due to the fact that the elbow rotation on an inverse kinematic chain is limited. In my case, it's limited to only rotate on the Z axis, while on the forward kinematic there is no limitation. So a lot of artists like to animate with the inverse kinematic because there is less controller to be animated to get a pretty broad range of movement but the forward kinematic chain offers more freedom and better arms. One of the benefits of using this baking system is that it will allow you to get better transition from forward kinematic to inverse kinematic but it can also allow you to convert mostly forward kinematic motion capture action into inverse kinematic action. On this jumping loop, we can see that the inverse kinematic controllers of the legs are not moving. But if I display the forward kinematic controller, we can see that they are animated. And this is pretty close from what you would have if you were downloading motion capture animation or an animation bank on the internet. They can be very useful, but also very painful to edit because you will have to edit each frame, but also the forward kinematic is so hard to animate whenever you have a contact pose like the feet on the ground. But once I've set my mechanism, I can bake the animation of the forward kinematic chain onto my inverse kinematic legs. So I've created quite the same mechanism as for the arm for the legs. I will bake it down onto the inverse kinematic and then switch from forward kinematic to inverse kinematic controllers. Once all the constraints are set up, I will press F3 and bake the animation. And you will see that now I'm playing the animation and the inverse kinematic controllers are following. From there, I'm free to switch to inverse kinematic controller and retake the animation or tweak it a bit, playing with the curve, etc. If I want to offset the moment where the foot is hitting the ground, I just have to move the contact pose. That's way easier than counter animating the wall forward kinematic chain. While a script will be probably faster to snap a current frame, this allows you to transfer a forward kinematic movement onto an inverse kinematic movement. And you can still snap your position whenever you want. Once you're familiar with the mechanism, it takes a few seconds to snap from FK to IK with this method. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I see you in the next one.